The abiotic factors are the non-living parts of an ecosystem. Now, for an organism to be able to live in an ecosystem, it needs to be able to interact with the abiotic factors. It needs to be able to tolerate the abiotic factors and exploit the abiotic factors. So I want to talk to you about abiotic factors and what some of these words mean in terms of survival of an organism. Abiotic means non-living. So it's all of the non-living parts of an ecosystem. For example, we might be talking about the availability of water or the availability of light. So, wind, how about temperature? Might be temperature of water, temperature of the air. Uh, so rainfall and water, I guess, go together. Um, what else have we got? We've got pH of the soil. We've got the salinity of the water. So we're talking about an ocean or something. So salinity, that means how much salt is in it. The nutrients in the soil. So if you're a plant, for example, the amount of nutrients in the soil are going to dictate how quickly you grow. So if we're talking about plants, for example, what, what do plants need to grow? Well, they need light from the sun they need water up through their roots. They need to also have access to nutrients through their roots as well. They need to have the soil of an appropriate um, pH. They need um, to have an appropriate temperature. Think about if it's too, too cold, well the reactions in the, the plant are gonna go too slowly. If it's too hot, it might cause damage to the plant. Evaporation of the water, for example. Uh, wind, plants might need wind for um, dispersal of seeds or for pollination. So you can imagine a number of these are non-living factors but they influence the survival of this tree. Another thing I want you to consider and I, met, I threw in these terms for you before about um, being able to tolerate a abiotic factor and being able to exploit it. So some abiotic factors are required for survival and they promote survival. Promote survival. For example, a plant needs light to grow and to survive. Um, and there's others at the other end of the spectrum. The other abiotic factors actually limit or make it harder for an organism to survive. For example, if we're talking about light and we're talking about plants, high light promote survival, low light makes it more difficult to survive. Um, now, so what organisms have is that they have these things called adaptations. Adaptations, adaptations are changes that occur to a species over evolutionary time. So not one organism, but the whole species over time changes to be better suited to the environment or the abiotic factors in which it lives. For example, let's think about a cactus that lives in the desert. Now, a cactus uh, is in an area with high light, but very low water and very high temperatures. Now the trouble with high temperatures and low water is that it's very hard for, um, for the plant to retain water and it loses water very quickly. So it doesn't have any leaves at all because plants normally lose water through their leaves. So the cactus doesn't have leaves. It actually photosynthesizes through its stems and its trunk. So if you compare, say, a, a cactus to the sort of plant that lives in a rainforest, which has very, very large leaves, because at the, the floor of a rainforest, there's very low light going through because they've got this very high canopy and there's very, very dense vegetation. So in a rainforest where there's low light, but there's lots of water, the plants need to have very large leaves. Cactus, no leaves. 
And the reason for it is because they have different abiotic factors. So they need to have adaptations to be able to cope with that. Another example, for, ex for, for example, is fire. So some plants, obviously if you imagine if you've got fire, it actually is going to wipe out a plant. But there's some Australian natives um, that actually thrive or exploit fire such that when fire rips through, it actually opens their seed pods and spreads the seeds. So they use fire to their advantage. Again, it's an adaptation to uh, cope with the abiotic factors of a particular area. So abiotic factors, so abiotic factors are along this sliding scale in different areas. Uh, things might be really good and others they, things might be really challenging. To be able to survive in an area where the abiotic factors are really challenging, you need to have very good adaptations to be able to survive. You would imagine all organisms want to live where it's pretty good, where conditions are really good. But the trouble is that everyone wants to live there. So there's a high population and that way there's high competition for resources. So if you can survive where things are a little bit tricky, that's where you're going to survive because there's less competition. So that's what dictates what lives in what areas. The abiotic factors and how well an organism is adapted to be able to cope with those abiotic factors.